What's crack, big dogs? Welcome, bike to the channel. Welcome, bike to the headquarters. Welcome, bike to video number two, waiver wire. We did the running backs already this morning, this AM. So if you missed our top waiver wire ads at the running back position for week five, link will be in the description for that video. It's quick, five, 10 minutes, whatever. Get in, get out. We're going to do the same thing with wide receivers and tight ends because we've got a lot of tight ends that I think are worthy of pickups today for all you frauds that drafted Robert Tunyon and need a replacement, we've got a few options for you today. All right. Like I said, quick in, quick out. Before we do so, y'all know we got to tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. When it comes to wide receivers, nothing too spicy on the wire. Uh, I do think there are some good options, though, that you could you can throw into your lineup uh, at, at the flex position. And I don't know if he's available in any of y'all leagues, but he's available in some of my leagues right now. And I think I think you all owe him an apology. And his name is A.J. Green, because right now all he's seen is green. The dude is scoring. He's making big plays. His offense is absolutely humming. Kyler has absolutely no, no reservations about throwing him the ball deep. He's actually beating guys over the top. I, I don't know where this came from with A.J. Green, but borderline, he might be borderline bike, all right? Uh, so A.J. Green needs to be picked up, and they play the San Francisco 49ers in week five, and this is going to be an absolute slugfest, high-scoring affair, and they have no cornerbacks on that team right now. So A.J. Green can be very confidently started in your flex spot in week five, which I'm sure means he's going three for 19 and Christian Kirk's going to go five for 112 and a touchdown. But AJ Green should be owned. Christian Kirk should be owned. DeAndre Hopkins, believe it or not, should also be owned. All right, down the list, we have Curtis Samuel. Now, Curtis Samuel made his first appearance of the 2021 season, and it was a bad one. Caught four of four targets for 19 yards. Didn't do really anything with his targets. Now, interestingly enough, the dude only played on 37% of snaps. So he's probably getting eased back in from this injury that cost him like the last six months, basically Q2 and Q3 of 2021. The big uptick for what should come for Curtis Samuel is now he's getting healthier. Talented player, we all know that. But Logan Thomas is also week to week with this hamstring injury. So the absence of Logan Thomas, who is one of the top targets in this offense, ooh, Montgomery need to miss four to five weeks. That's rough. Rough city. Go spend on Damian Williams. Go drop the budget on him. Curtis Samuel played on 37% of snaps, but Logan Thomas is out one of the top targets, which means Curtis Samuel is going to have to force himself to be more of a target in this offense. So Curtis Samuel, go pick him up, I guess, if you want to. Um, him and like Rashad Bateman coming off the IR, both guys that probably should be rostered at this point. They play the Saints next week, who were just torched by Daniel Jones and Kadarius Toney. That is something I never thought would come out of my mouth. The combination of those two players torching a defense, especially the Saints. So Curtis Samuel playing some in the slot, some out wide, versatile player. Obviously, he's going to have to get more involved in this offense. And speaking of DJ and the Giants, Mr. Kadarius Toney played on 78% of the snaps last week, came away with nine targets, six catches, 78 receiving yards. So a really good PPR day for him if you if you threw him into your flex. Uh, played 66% of his snaps from thy slot. Obviously, we're going to keep a very close eye on Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton. If Slayton's back, I don't really care. It doesn't impact Kadarius Tony much. If Shepard's back, that's going to be a problem where Kadarius Tony snaps probably dip a little bit. But at this point, you know, they're coming off, uh, they're riding a hot, hot hand right now with DJ and Kadarius Tony. Maybe they kind of just let this ride. Maybe they let Sterling Shepard sit another week to see what they got in their first round rookie. Again, remember, first round draft pick. He's got the capital. They want to see him produce so Gadarius Tony if Sterling Shepard's out I feel pretty good uh, I feel pretty good about having him in my flex against a team like Dallas you'll have Trayvon Diggs on Kenny Galladay Saquon Barkley is going to eat Kadarius Tony should see another six seven eight nine targets in the slot so we like Kadarius Tony another slot receiver we do like is Mr. Jameson Crowder now Jameson Crowder had the big day for the Jets and Zach Wilson on Zach Wilson's first real big day of the season Jameson Crowder led the team in targets with nine of them. It was his first game back. He played on 62% of the snaps, 66% from the slot. Now, the big news is whether or not Elijah Moore returns. He was out in week four because of a concussion. At this point, Jameson Crowder is just a professional man. Just puts his dick in the dirt and he works hard and he produces week in and week out when he can stay healthy. I think at this point, the Jets want to give Zach Wilson as much help as they can get. And as exciting as Elijah Moore was during the summer and during rookie drafts and 
combine and all that shit and how badly we want him to succeed. And I think he'll be fine in the NFL. Right now, I think Jameson Crowder would do a lot better for Zach Wilson than Elijah Moore. That being said, too, when Elijah Moore is back, they want to put him on the outside. They want him to be a separator on the outside, which would eat more into Keelan Cole's work than Jameson Crowder's work. So I think Jameson Crowder is going to be a sneaky, good player Uh, at least a depth piece for you, like he has been year in, year out when Darnold was there. I think he'll continue to see that same production that he has over the last couple of years. So I think Jameson Crowder is a really solid start, especially this week against the Atlanta Falcons. All right. So Jameson Crowder, another guy to keep your eye on. Speaking in that same vein, we got Randall Cobb. They're all like the same fucking dude. Jameson Crowder, Randall Cobb, eh, Curtis Samuel's probably more talented, but all the same dude. All right. Randall Cobb, Five for 69, two touchdowns. Uh, he actually only played on 46% of the snaps, which is kind of surprising given the uh, given the production. But he was a big part of Aaron Rodgers' personal game plan. Now, Alan Lazard was the wide receiver, too, because MVS is on the IR. So when you're looking at this Green Bay pecking order, you're like, you know, who's going to eat behind Devontae Adams? Sometimes Devontae Adams just sits down at the fucking table and takes two or three plates and nobody else can eat. All right. But in this game, Randall Cobb ended up scoring twice. Alan Lazard running the second most routes. But I do think we'll see an uptick in Randall Cobb's playing time because Aaron Rodgers says so. Uh, Next week, they play Cincinnati. So that is obviously a passing defense that you can attack. I feel I don't feel that confident about Randall Cobb, but I feel good about Kadarius Tony. I feel good about Jameson Crowder. I feel great about A.J. Green. Obviously, the last one on this list I think has to be mentioned is Darnell Mooney. Seven targets, five catches, 125 yards, plays against the Raiders next week. Now, uh, this was like his first real big game of the season. We're four weeks into the season. That does not give me confidence. I don't know who's going to be the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. They very well might go back to Andy Dalton if that's the case, and I definitely don't want anything to do with Darnell Mooney. If it is Justin Fields, I just don't know how if he's good enough to actually sustain fantasy viable production for Darnell Mooney and or Allen Robinson right now. So like Darnell Mooney is not a guy I'm going out necessarily going nuts about based off of one game. This is going to be heavy, heavy recency bias. I'm not really going to put any fab dollars down on Darnell Mooney. If you need a wide receiver and you want to throw zero or one dollars onto Darnell Mooney and see if you get him fine, but I would not be going out and uh, expecting any sort of consistency from Darnell Mooney. That'll wrap up the receivers. Let's talk about tight ends. We have Mr. Max Williams of the Arizona Cardinals, man. Now, I don't I don't think he's that great of a player, but he's been putting up some production in this offense, just like everybody on this passing offense, man. They just take turns and who's going to go off. And usually the tight end is the odd man out in this offense. But every once in a while, every other game, Max Williams seems to pop off. So he can do you a lot better than some of the other tight ends we've probably been putting into our lineups. He is on pace currently for 60 catches, 716 yards, and four Tuggers. All right. So Max Williams, probably my least favorite on this list right now. My favorite by far is Dalton Schultz. Uh, Dalton Schultz, another big game in this one, caught six of eight targets for 58 yards and a tugger. Out targeted Blake Jarwin, eight to one. They still are running around the same amount of routes and playing a lot of the same number in terms of like snap share and whatnot, especially with Michael Gallup out. But Dalton Schultz is on the field for 70% of the snaps. Okay. Um, He's had six catches in three of four games. He's got week five against the New York Giants, who have allowed the fifth most fantasy points to the tight end position. So Dalton Schultz and Dak, it feels like the chemistry is there. Dalton Schultz was great last year. feels like we just don't give him any credit for what he's been doing. We just feel like it's very fluky, but he continues to produce at a very consistent level, continues to stay on the field, continues to just do what we want from a fantasy tight end. So Dalton Schultz, don't think too hard about this one. It's a great offense, an efficient offense, one that's going to score a lot, one that's going to pass a lot, and Dalton Schultz is catching a lot of those balls. So Dalton Schultz needs to be prioritized on your waiver wire. Dawson Knox, man, averaging five targets a game in another high passing offense. And imagine when they're actually in a shootout. Imagine when they're not up 40 to nothing and they actually pass the ball until the end of the game. Um, He has scored four touchdowns in their last three games. And Dawson Knox is a really athletic guy coming out of uh, Old Miss. He didn't have the production in college, which was what probably deterred some people from him. But you're not going to have production when you are competing with A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf and Elijah Moore and all these fucking phenomenal playmakers at the college level. What an unbelievable fucking pass catching group there in uh, in Ole Miss, man. That That's like some of my favorite shit about like football and, and especially college football now, like really, really following it because we're in like the dynasty space is looking back at some offenses and just like the firepower that they have third string, like Najee Harris, fourth string at Alabama and the running back group, just like unreal, unreal type shit. And that's what like Dawson Knox was dealing with when he was in college. Last up on this list, we have Ricky Seals Jones. I talked about him in the live stream yesterday. He took over as a full-time player at tight end while Logan Thomas was out. So Logan Thomas, again, week to week with his hamstring injury. Ricky Seals Jones came in, wasn't a big impact player, but I believe he had four targets right off the rip. And again, someone's going to have to see targets outside of Terry McLaurin here. Okay. Taylor Heineke's playing well. Ricky Seals Jones was top 10 in routes run and snaps at the tight end position with Logan Thomas playing in some of that game. So I think he comes in 
You know, he was one of the more athletic. He was like the top two overall recruit in 2013, 2014. An unbelievable, like highly touted recruit coming out of high school as a wide receiver. So this guy's athletic. He's a wide receiver and uh, he should take the Logan Thomas role. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a big game or two from Ricky Seals Jones over the next week or so. So that wraps up the tight end. I feel like I had one more that I can't think of who it was. Maybe CJ Ozoma out of Cincy. I don't know how involved he's really going to be when T. Higgins returns as like the possession guy, but I think he's another name to keep an eye on. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of guys on the waiver wire this week for tight ends that I think are super, super, super duper intriguing. So just to wrap up, we have wide receivers of Curtis Samuel, A.J. Green, Kadarius Toney, Jameson Crowder, Darnell Mooney, Randall Cobb, tight ends, Max Williams, Dalton Schultz, Dawson Knox, Ricky Seals-Jones, and C.J. Uzoma. All right, that's all we got for y'all today. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to thy channel if you're new. We will be bite tomorrow with another uh, underdog draft. So if you're not signed up for underdog, they reopen their best ball draft. So if your team suck, if your season long draft suck, you can still win some money. Go to underdogfantasy.com. The link for the app will be in the description. Throw 10 bucks onto your account. Use promo code BDGE. You'll get $20 into your account free for doing so. And then tomorrow you could draft with me. We are doing full, full drafts. It's open until the 14th. Wait, is tomorrow the draft? Yeah, tomorrow we will be drafting. So you'll be able to join drafts with me. I'll tweet out the link. I'll put the link in the Discord. So if you want to draft and, and re reconcile all the bullshit that you did this summer with the terrible drafting of your fantasy teams like myself, now is the time to do so. Underdogfantasy.com. I'm out. I love you. Goodbye.